Praise God. Well, you know what? Thank Him for life, right? And we want to thank the Lord for our moms today. It's Happy Mother's Day. So let's just let's just give a thanks to the Lord for every mom. Yeah, we we have a gift for all the moms here today. So before you leave, make sure you have your Mother's Day gift. Amen. Well, I'm going to make this uh, real short because I really want to get to the heart and the need of this. And that's really the testimonies of those uh, who uh, experience freedom. And in John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. Let's bow our heads and pray. Lord, we take authority over the enemy. We bind the devil right now in the name of Jesus. We break the shackles, the chains, the strongholds that the devil has tr tried to put on us. We break them in the name of Jesus. And we loosen your power, the power of your Holy Spirit in our lives. And we declare we're under your authority, Lord, and that your power will work through us in your mighty name, Jesus. And we give you the thanks and praise. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Well, Jesus' plan for our lives is a lot bigger than what we think. And sometimes we can be so beat up by the world that we don't even realize what his plan is for us. But his plan is very simple. It's seek and save the lost, uh, give victory, give an abundant life to those who the devil had uh, bound up and in chains, and then give us a life of victory and to give us an abundant life. Now, it's not all about us. It's about him. That's the thing about that. When we, make, when we make it about him, we start experiencing more and more abundant life. And just, it, it's, it's the same. It's a principle all across the board. God made you for a purpose yes. and a plan. And he wants good things for your life. Yes. He doesn't want bad things. He, he wants good things. And sometimes we get convinced or deceived by the enemy that the bad things are actually the good things and God's holding out on us. But that's not true. All the way through the Bible, people get beat up by the world and by the devil. And we see once again in this, uh, th this, this reading today in Mark 8.22 is there was a man who was blind. Now, Jesus had a different plan for this blind guy. And here's how it goes in Mark 8.22. When they arrived in Bethsaida, some of the people brought a blind man to Jesus and they begged him to touch the man and heal him. Jesus took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the village. Then spitting on the man's eyes, he laid his hands on him and asked, can you see anything now? The man looked around and said, yes. He said, I see people, but I can't see them very clearly. They look like trees walking around. Then Jesus placed his hands on the man's eyes again and his eyes were opened. His sight was completely restored and he could see everything clearly. How many know that the Lord wants you to see things clearly? Amen. So many times the devil wants to blind us to the truth, right? The devil wants to blind us to the truth and he doesn't want us to see clearly, but the Lord wants us to see things clearly. I just want you to look at, uh, th this guy got, <laughs> got a, uh, a first, a first uh, touch from Jesus, but Jesus asked him, now can you see? Can you, can you see anything now? And the guy said, well, yeah, I can see. And a lot of people get that first touch and then they stop. But the Lord's got more for you after that first touch. Yeah. You can see right here that Jesus touches his, him again. He, he touches the man's eyes again. And, the, and then the guy received the fullness of it. So many times that people come to Jesus and they get just a little touch, a little taste. And wow, that was good. And then they kind of leave it at that. But God's got more for you. He's got more for us. Don't stop with that first touch. Don't stop there. Now, the Lord wants freedom for you. He wants freedom for everybody. He wants freedom. This guy was bound up, man. I mean, talking about not having freedom, he doesn't have any eyesight. He can't see where he's going. He's got to be led by hand. Now, that doesn't sound like freedom. It's not a, a chain necessarily, but when you're being led by the hand, well, that's not exactly a, a, a freedom, a free life for an adult, right? Well, the Lord has more for us. He's got more freedom. Now, we just came back from Freedom Weekend, and it was, it was awesome. 
It was awesome because the Lord is awesome, and the Lord's presence was there. But a lot of people ask me, why, well, why do we do Freedom Weekend? Why do we have Freedom Weekend? Well, here's some things. I just want to cover these quick. Freedom Weekend gets you away from your distractions. And there's a lot of distractions. Now, in this story I just read about what Jesus did, it says that Jesus took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the village. Now, <laughs> how many know that sometimes you've got to get out of where your comfort zone is? You've got to get out of your place of where your blindness is and all that to really receive what the Lord has. Now, could the Lord just do a miracle right there in the village? Yeah, but he made it a point to show us this. There's times where we have to get out of our village. We have to leave where we're at to receive more from the Lord. And the Lord took him by the hand and led him out. Now that should tell us something right there. So Freedom Weekend kind of helps do that. It gets you away from the distractions. It also creates an atmosphere of worship. Now in verse 22 it says, Some people brought a blind man to Jesus. You know, that's what, that's what uh, worshiping is all about. Man, we want to bring people into the presence of Jesus. We want to, that's the goal of the worship team. That's the goal of our worship leader is to bring everyone into the presence of God. And so these people, they brought the blind man to Jesus. Man, what a great place uh, for worship. And by the way, whenever you start worshiping the Lord, no matter where you're at, in your home, in your car, wherever you're at, God says that he inhabits the praises of his people. So it won't take long. You'll start feel the presence of God once you start worshiping him and you'll be in his presence. Now, another thing that Freedom Weekend does that God's plan is for us is provides time of ministry. Now it says here in verses 23 through 25, spitting on the man's hand, eyes, he, he laid his hands on him and asked, can you see anything now? Now can you imagine bringing a, 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 a person for the first time to church and then one of the, one of the deacons or myself, we, we take the guy off to the side and spit in his eye. I mean, wouldn't that go like, oh my gosh, you know. Hey, you don't know how God's going to heal the next time someone gets healed. You don't know. And, and this is, God does it a lot of different ways. The main thing to remember is God is our healer. The Lord, the Lord is our healer. And he still heals today. The man looked around and said, yeah. He said, I, I see people, but I can't see them very clearly. They looked at tre like trees walking around. Then Jesus placed his hands on the man's eyes again. This is ministry time. Now, sometimes you can't have ministry time uh, in where you're at, you got to get away to have that full ministry time, that second dose. You know, it shocks me sometimes where people have things they want prayer for, but they don't come up here to the altar to receive prayer. That's called ministry time. Ministry time. Here's, here's a, just the last point I want to make about Freedom Weekend. It provides opportunities to receive from God. And verse 25, it says, Jesus placed his hands on the man's eyes again, and his eyes were opened. His sight was completely restored, and he could see everything clearly. The healing was there already. It was there. It was, it was regardless, it was going to happen. I mean, this is Jesus here. And, and some people, well, he didn't quite get it. The first. Well, there's a whole point that Jesus is making in doing this. Jesus wants you to receive from him. He's not the problem that we don't receive healing. Okay? It's us. We're the problem. Whatever you're not receiving from God, don't blame God. Because he wants to do it. If it's, it might be already done, waiting in a package to come to you. you just, you're just not really open to receiving. And so we're the ones that stop, stop us from receiving from God. We're the ones God has more for you. He has more for you. Jesus' plan for you is that you receive. Jesus wants to give you freedom. Here we go in John 8, 36. I'm just using the common English version here. If the Son gives you freedom, you are free. Yeah. Well, the whole problem is, is we don't want to receive freedom. But I tell you what, 
God wants to give freedom to you. He wants to give. Now, he's already given you a free will. That should tell you something. But he wants to give you freedom that you maybe don't even understand at this point yet. And so who is freedom for? That's the question. Who is it for? It's for everybody. It's for the lost. It's for the hurting. It's for those who are in darkness and backslidden, those who have anger issues. It's for those who have been saved and maybe not received the fullness yet. Maybe you've received a touch from God but just haven't received the fullness. It's for everyone. And so, really, I want you to, to hear who freedom is for from the people who receive freedom themselves at Freedom Weekend. Now, we're, we're going to show some testimonies here, and it's not all the testimonies, and if you're not in here, don't, don't think that, oh, I left yours out because it wasn't good. Every single one was really good. What it came down was uh, time constraints. So they were all amazing, and I will... I, I do have all of them saved, so if any of you want, want your testimony, we can give you the testimony and let you see that and just remember it all, all the time later on. Testimonies are powerful. Uh, we overcome them, overcome the enemy by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimonies, right? So testimonies are powerful. I don't want you to see these powerful testimonies because it really tells us who freedom is for. Who freedom is for. Here we go. It's really unexpected. I came with um, shoulder pain and I had been going to therapy for like a month and a half and not really seeing improvement. And I had just said, the Lord just needs to heal it and it's gone. Woo! <laughs> I didn't ask for that. So thank yeah. God. Um, and I came here because um, I wanted to learn about this, you know, ministry and deliverance. Um, and I thought I was all set, like I said, that the night at the bonfire, like, kind of, I brought um, friends with me, and I was like, oh, they need this. <laughs> right? <laughs> First off, they need deliverance, um, if you think you don't. So, um, the Lord healed my heart. And I had some pretty deep hurts and um, that I feel were kind of holding me back from where I need to go. Um, and now I feel free. Like I, feel, I can run into what God has for me now. So, praise God. Truly, I thank God for His goodness and His mercy and before I even say my testimony, I want to thank God for filling me again with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Amen. And one of the things he really ministered to me last night and at the cross, I seen it. I seen Jesus at the cross. Amen. And I seen his blood coming down. He set me free. He let me know the past is over. Amen. And I can, I'm able to cry again and weep and not only see him at the cross, but I hear him say, Son, I love you. Yeah, <laughs> my daddy, my daddy said, I love you, son. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. Nothing but his love. I'm free. I'm free. They say free to weep here. I'm free. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you. And what's so good about it, Jesus is real to me. He ain't no fairy tale. He ain't on the cross no more. He's in my heart. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And I just thank you for Team Child and God brought me here from well, I'm trying to remember where I came from. <laughs> Coming in from Tampa and everything, it's just been a blessing. And our God has just been good to me, man. He's really been good to me and, and, and spared my life and brought me from a long place. Because I was in darkness, deep in darkness. Man, at the church, backslid and everything, he wanted to give up on life. And they were telling me about this year. I, uh, and I said, okay, God, I'm going there. And I wrote some stuff down. And I said, God, I want you to do something in my life. A lot of guys like to say, what's wrong? What's wrong? Ain't nothing wrong. I'm, I'm trying to get in tune with God. I ain't got time 
a clown, a joke, and joke. I'm getting down to business with daddy. But I need him to get some stuff out of my life. And he did. And I thank him for it. That I'm free. Yeah. I'm able to see. Yeah. Able to jump. Yeah. And say, I hold my hand up and say, thank you, Lord, for being real to me. And set me free. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Calm down. Amen. But he's good. They sing that song and say, break the shackles off your feet. Pow! He broke them. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, brother. I'm, it feels good to be free. Free that I ain't hanging over drugs no more. All lying spirit, evil spirit, hate spirit. Pow! My breakup. Glory! Hallelujah. I got to get out of here. It's getting good. God bless you. I thank you. Some stuff because <laughs> I had some stuff that I needed to get rid of because. And it caused me a lot of anger. I mean, I'm not out of the woods yet because anger has caused me a lot of problems in my past. And a lot of my problems have been revolved around anger. And um, I just want to thank the Lord for giving my life back. Because mm -hmm. I was a mess. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Like I said in my reg before in my regular testimony, I've been locked up more than I've been out there in the world. So this is all new. I'm usually locked up by now. So I made the choice to come to Teen Challenge because I knew I was heading straight back to prison. To, to prison, and I just thank the Lord for this weekend and uh, this. Uh, amen. Amen. Well, uh, you know I didn't know what to expect coming here. Um, I've never been to one of these and. Uh, but I knew that something powerful would happen if um, I allowed, yes. you know, God to work and, um, you know, do what I had to do. Uh, there's a lot of things that I ran from in my life, you know, a lot of the issues that I had in my life, you know, I ran from. You know, I was always afraid to deal with these things, and uh, when things got hard, I would go back out to the world and, you know, start drinking and drugging and, you know, having sex and all that other stuff. and. You know, so coming here, I kind of had a lot of anxiety. Um, I was like, man, there's a lot of things that, you know, I know the Lord wants me to deal with, but, you know, I'm afraid to do it. And uh, so I had a lot of fear. It's like, man, there's some things that, uh, you know, happened in the past that I don't want to look at. And, you know, I'd rather just, you know, turn a blind eye to it and pretend it never happened. But, um, you know, I don't get healed that way. So uh, coming here, um, we were, the first night I was here, you know, actually, prior to coming here, I was praying. There was a word that um, my pastor's wife gave me uh, back in 2014 um, about what the Lord was going to do in my life. And because of everything that I'd done, I thought, you know, the Lord kind of gave up on that. I was like, I can't see that coming to pass. And so I was like, Lord, you know, is that still in store for me? And uh, I wasn't sure. And the first night I was here, I got prayed for by uh, Pastor Tom, and uh, he started speaking to me, and he was like, you know, I hear the Lord saying that you're going to minister to young men. Amen. He said, and you're going to do a lot of things. He's like, I see you working with a lot of a lot of the youth and ministering to them. And it was exactly everything that my pastor's wife told me in 2014. And so that was just like, it, it brought me that hope again, you know, that the Lord was going to see it me, and that he hasn't given up on me. Um, I lived under a lot of self-condemnation uh, self -condemnation for the things that I did. You know, I hurt a lot of people. I hurt my family. I hurt myself. Um, I couldn't even name everything that I've done to people. And, uh, you know, when we were going through these, these courses, and I had to start checking out some of that stuff, I didn't know it was all going to be on there, but it was like, man, it, you know, some of the things you forget about, you just, I suppressed it for so long. But when, when I was looking at that list, I was like, oh, man, I was like checking almost everything on that list. And, uh, you know, there was some things for you to write out names, um, you know, with some of the sexual sins. And it's like, man, we ain't got enough paper here. Like, you know, not to be funny, but it was like, man, Lord, I did a lot of bad stuff. It became a reality to me just how bad my sin was. Yes. You know, this is even becoming a, after becoming a believer, um, I wasn't walking in freedom. And uh, I remember just looking at all that stuff. And I was thinking, you know, Lord, you know, it's right here between me and you. Yeah. 
And, uh, you know, I went and sat with um, Pastor Kim yesterday, you know, and I had to confess those things. And I had to confess um, the unforgiveness that I had towards others. You know, it was people that hurt me in the past. You know, I hurt me in the past, so I had to forgive myself. And, um, you know, I had a lot of unforgiveness towards God, too, because um, I thought it was his fault that these things happened to me. You know, how could you let that happen to me? And yesterday, I started breaking down. I just started crying. And uh, I was for a long time, I wouldn't allow myself to experience the joy of the Lord. You know, the peace that he gives. wouldn't let myself do it because of all the things that I did. I was punishing myself. And uh, yesterday, I... I connected with the heart of God, you know, that's not what he wanted for me. Yeah. And uh, so Pastor Kim and I, we just got done talking, and he prayed for me, and I felt popping in my ears. <laughs> and I was like, my ears are popping, and I don't know, it's kind of weird. And he was like, you know, it's like when you're in a plane, he's like, when you take off, and you start getting up higher and higher, you go to a higher level, he was like, the pressure causes your ears to pop and he's like that's what the Lord's doing he's taking you a higher level Amen. And, uh, I truly believe that I just I don't know I just feel I feel great um, I feel clean inside again yeah. and uh, you know that's a good feeling to have is knowing that I don't have to worry about things that happened to me in the past or things that I've done in the past um, that doesn't have a hold on me anymore I'm not ashamed of it and uh I'm not scared. <laughs> I like to thank God who was the head of my life today. Amen. You know, uh, when I came here, I was I didn't know what to expect. And we was going through a class and then my leader Ernest put out a thing out of his pocket. And he said, thief. And I told him, I said, you know, that's me. And I really began to uh, look at myself. I held unforgiveness for a long time. I never forgave myself for some things that I did. I thought I got away with it. Mm -hmm. But old feelings came about mm -hmm. this weekend. Mm -hmm. And then he put out another piece of paper, said liar, that was me. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I've been manipulating. You can say I was a Jacob, feel like that. <laughs> I did it all. And I began to hate that person. I don't want to be known for, as that person no more. Yeah. And, um, but I thank God for freezing weekend. You know, he's freed me of some things that uh, I carried for 30 and 40 years. Yeah. One of the things that that was brought back to my attention, I had a brother that died of colon cancer at 29. Mm -hmm. in, in the middle of my addiction, <clears throat> I didn't treat my brother right. Mm -hmm. But my brother loved the Lord so much. Mm -hmm. The last words he spoke to me, he was over the phone. He told me, he said, Mike, don't worry about me. I'm going to be all right. My brother was a believer. But he had forgiven me, but I never forgave myself. Mm -hmm. And uh, those feelings, I had a lot of hurt. A lot of, but it, you know, don't, don't, don't feel bad for me. You know, this is George for time because I'm free today. Amen. <laughs> I'm just overwhelmed with the things that was brought up out of me that I didn't know that was holding me back. Yeah. yeah. I was carrying some some things that uh, I'm not proud of. Things I did in the world. But I thank God that I'm not that person. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I came here get, knowing that I would get rid of some baggage. God has been working on me for a long time. And the movie that just came to my mind sitting there, because I'm a movie person, was Pilgrim's Progress. Mm -hmm. Anyone's yeah. ever seen it? Yeah. And 
it just reminds me of this because it's it's all about hearing our sin and everything, every emotion, every emotional baggage on our backs. And here we got to unload it at the cross. Yeah. 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 I'm just amazed. And I'm getting ready to go on to a new chapter in my yeah. life, and now I'm ready. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Backstory. I've never really had a relationship with my father. My mother got pregnant with me when uh, they were both still in high school, and uh, there was an argument on whether or not she should have an abortion. When she decided to go through with the pregnancy, my father began to be physically abusive to her, uh, to the point where he even threw her down a flight of stairs just to get rid of me. Um, he abandoned the both of us shortly after I was born, and I've carried the full weight of that. Uh, rejection and bitterness, hatred, you know, since I've been a little kid, I've tried to cover up with uh, drugs and alcohol and uh, didn't get anywhere fast with that. When I came into the Teen Challenge program, it was kind of put on my heart that uh, I should reach out to him and forgive him. And that idea absolutely terrified me. I mean, if he rejected me as a newborn, you know, I had this thought of how much more is he going to reject me now that I'm fully grown and I have all these issues and baggage with me. But um, when we got here the very first day, I had uh, got prayed over by Pastor Tom. He says, you know, I don't know your background, but the Lord is speaking to me. And he says that you're going to have reconciliation between you and your family. Amen. And that, that's a promise from God. Amen. So I, I got to have the courage to stand on that word. Yes. Uh, my name is Daryl, <laughs> from North uh, Florida. Ended up in Saginaw four and a half months ago. <laughs> you know, uh, being here at Freedom, I realized that I blame my mother for a lot of the things I went through. You know, and you can ask me about my mom. My mother is one of the sweetest person in the world, <laughs> but the uh, drug addiction. I started when I was 14 years old. It made me rebel. And since I've been here, I, I really think I blame my mama for a lot of stuff. And never really thought about it until now. You know, with the behavior I had started doing, I say they should have found out. They should have knew something was wrong. Mm -hmm. I'm doing cocaine at 15 years old. Started failing in the schoolwork. You know, I was a pretty good athlete. That's the only reason I stayed in school, because my grades had got bad, but the school allowed me to go ahead and play. You know, then I had, you know, resentment, bitterness toward my brother. Didn't know that until now. You know, but I always consider myself a good person, because I help anybody, anybody. But I want to help them myself. I was going around talking about it. I ain't doing that to nobody but myself. You know, I hurt my mother. And I, well, I love my mother. I, I really hurt her. So me coming to Saginaw, cause I probably ended up dead or in prison if I wanted to came. Because I had a person that I didn't like myself. I was a bad guy. Did things to people, didn't care. So I probably ended up dead or in prison. But now, I know who I am. Amen. Amen. I know I got a father who loves me. Amen. Amen. I've got a bunch of brothers I care about. Yeah. You know, one day I wouldn't care about none of y'all. <laughs> so, but I just thank God for what he's doing in my life. Amen. I'm going to be, I always go back to my mom because I love my mom. Amen. You know. And I just thank God for what he's doing to my life, man. You know, I help anybody if I can, you know. Sometimes I sneak and do things for brothers I shouldn't be doing. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> no, but I just thank what he's doing in my life. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I got a relationship with God now, which I didn't have. I grew up in the church, but never knew God, never, never knew him at all, man. Now I could walk, you know, I wake up sometimes praying. 
Mm -hmm. My woman may say, man, you be talking in your sleep. I'll be up praying. Mm -hmm. Just saying thank you. Thank you. Because I know where I come from. Mm -hmm. I didn't like the person I was. Mm -hmm. If you don't like yourself, who would who like you? Right. <laughs> 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 you know, I <laughs> Man, you know, I got I, I care about people. I got a heart now. Mm -hmm. I smile when I give a teeth back and be smiling more. Hi. Hi. Hey, Kim. Hi, Kim. I think we're going to AA. Yeah. Oh, wait, we're not going to AA. Okay. Um, I came here really, I love Jesus. Thank you. Jesus, hallelujah. You've seen my life. You don't even know. But I came here really broken. Seriously broken. Like, I was ready to die broken. Mm -hmm. And so this place has saved my life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. So when I got told about this, I'm like, yeah, I'll go oversee. <laughs> but then I forgot the three powerful women behind the three powerful pastors. Whew. I am not a preacher. God says yet. That's right. <laughs> Charles says yet. Yeah. <laughs> so instead of me coming to work, I got to receive, and it's been too long. Amen. So through this weekend, through these lovely, strong women, through the pastors, through the ladies, I got free. Amen. <laughs> that I needed. So thank you, ladies. Amen. Because God's not done with me yet. Amen. Amen. I left a lot of stuff at that cross. Amen. And I told the sister, every time I think I'm going to do something wrong, I'm going to hear those nails that I put my sin on the cross. Amen. Because those are sounds I never want to hear again. Yes. Yeah. But I also know where I can repent and yes. find forgiveness. That's right. <laughs> John. <laughs> um, it was a. Uh, I didn't know what to expect either. Like a lot of you guys didn't expect what was going on. I've never been to a retreat, but I know a lot of strongholds have been broken down. Amen. A lot of enemies have lost, and we're. In a, I'm in a better place because I was able to sit down with Pastor Kim and Pastor Tom yeah. last night and get express myself about some things I don't really open up about, but it was yeah. definitely good experience yeah. and definitely a lot more confident now that yeah. I can be the man that God wants me to be. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, so I just want to piggyback on what Brother Ernie said. Um, it's been a long time since I've done a Freedom Weekend, and I knew what I was going to have to do to prepare for this weekend. And so I remember telling my husband, oh my gosh, we got to fast. <laughs> we got to pray. I got to study. I have to. And I had to give up time from my grandkids to be able to do this, and I have a grandson a specific grandson who will call me all the time and say, Grandma, Mom, he's 17, but Grandma, you want to watch movies, you want to do this, you want to do that. And I had to say, I can't do that. I have to study. Or I couldn't go out to eat. I couldn't have cake on my birthday, right? <laughs> right? Um, things like that. But a verse came to me. For no discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. 
Later on, however, it produces a harvest yes. of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. Doesn't matter if you're wearing this t-shirt or you're sitting in that chair right now. That's right. We have to discipline ourselves That's right. to move forward with the Lord. Right. And it may hurt, but I can tell you that this last few months that we've prepared for this weekend, it's so worth it to see yes. chains broken, yes. to see you yes. free, yes. and to see joy. So you walk here and you were kind of heavy carrying your baggage. Nobody really said too much. And you definitely weren't jumping up and down right away, okay? But as we see layer after layer yeah. after layer peeled away, yeah. it made it all worth it. Yes. Yeah. So stay strong yeah. and allow the discipline to bring you to freedom. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, praise God, right? Let's give let's give them a, a big a big thank you for sharing. Well, that's testimonies of people who receive freedom. Now, you may notice a theme. They all had heard the good news, and many of them went to church when they fell away. And so freedom is for everybody. You know, God wants us to be free. Jesus' plan is for us to remain free. But we have to, at times, fight for that. Not that we haven't received it from Jesus or that he doesn't want to give it to us, but we kind of stand in the way at times of really having that in our life all the time. And, and so it's really up to us to remain free and live in freedom and a lot of, you know, it goes back to what Jesus said when he told the disciples, pray like this. And he, he gave the template in how to pray. Well, that's a daily prayer. And in that daily prayer, not only is praying for uh, food and work and all that, it's also praying for forgiveness. And so even as Christians, we would be uh, the biggest hypocrites in the world if we said we, we didn't mess up at times. We didn't make mistakes. We didn't sin. Maybe, you know, our, our sin, hopefully, is getting further and further uh, apart from when the times we do. But we still mess up, right? I mean, you might have got mad at your spouse or, or said something, a hurtful word. And guess what? The Lord has a very clear answer for that. And what do we do? We go to the cross. We leave it. At, we go to Jesus himself. If we confess our sin, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's how we remain close to God throughout this whole journey that we have, this faith journey with him. And so I, I, I just want to let you know, uh, God's still working on me. He's still working on you. But one thing's for sure, he wants freedom for every single person. So who's freedom for? Well, Christy said freedom's for the hurting. Whether it's physical healing or inner healing, uh, Charles went into freedoms for those, who have, uh, those in darkness or those who have backslidden. David talked about freedoms for those who have anger issues. Nathan talked about those who are afraid and run from their, their issues and their problems in life. Michael talked about uh, freedom is for thieves and liars. And Pam talked about those with baggage. Joseph talked about those who are unwanted or feel rejected. Daryl talked about, those, you know, he blamed others. Uh, those who blame others and, and hurt others, freedoms for them too. And Kim talked about those who are broken, freedoms for them. Katrina talked about those who are running out empty and needed to be refilled. And John talked about freedoms for those who are bound up or have strongholds uh, in some areas that need to be broken down. And Kathy talked, just hit on the last part, is those who need to be more disciplined and learn how to sacrifice a little bit more. That's who freedom is for. Freedom is for all of us. So let's stand up. And, 
and I, I just want to ask you if there's any part in your life that you don't have freedom in, whether it's uh, physical, emotional, mental, whether there's something beyond that, whatever it is, you can look to Jesus. Look to Jesus. He will give you freedom. He will give you freedom. And those of you who don't even know Jesus yet, here, here's, it's, it's very simple. Repent of your sin and believe in Jesus. Put your trust in him. And make that a daily thing. Keep drawing close to the Lord. God doesn't want to beat you up. He wants to lift you up. The Holy Spirit doesn't condemn you, but he will convict you. God loves you just the way you are, but he loves you so much that he's not going to leave you in that state. Right? So it's up to us. How much do you want to receive? It's all up to you. God's willing to give all of it. He, after all, he demonstrated that he gave everything through his son at the cross, right? So just, just ask God. Draw close to him. Praise him. Thank him for who he is. And if there's anything in your life, any baggage, anything, just repent of it. Leave it at the cross and put your trust in Jesus. Amen? So you can go out, walk in victory, and experience that abundant life. That abundant life. And when people see that, they're going to want to know what it is. What's different about you? And guess what? You can tell them. You can tell them, hey, I'm, I'm living in victory because of Jesus. Right? I got the joy of the Lord, and it's all because of Jesus. Hey, I, I'm living an abundant life, and it's all because of Jesus. So, Lord, we just ask you, Lord, to touch us once again. You touched that blind guy a couple different times, and, Lord, many, it doesn't match our theology on how you did it, Lord. And uh, Lord, but we pray that you would touch us, Lord again and again, every time we need a touch, Lord, that we won't be afraid to come to you or think that we don't need more. Lord, that we would come to you and we would receive everything you have for us. And Lord, if we've never received anything, Lord, I pray for those people who would come forth for the very first time and that they would receive from you. In your mighty name, Jesus, I pray that more and more people trust in you and live that vic victorious life. In your mighty name, Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. All right, praise God. Go out, be blessed, live in a victor victorious life, and live that abundant life in the name of Jesus. <laughs>